The Mi Mix 3 is a really unique smartphone. Not necessarily because it's got very small bezels, or the fact that its back looks a bit like an iPhone X. In fact, that would make it the opposite of unique. Uh, no, the fact that it's a physical manual slider, and one of the few, if not the only, a physical manual slider that we've seen in the past couple of years and a lot of people especially even OnePlus who are a fairly mainstream brand have gone with the motorized camera uh, well Xiaomi here has uh, opted to go with a manual slider and it's something that I really wanted to check out thankfully my friend Kelsey is a sucker for gimmicks and uh, well he went out and bought this phone so he's lent it to me today we're going to review it I've had it for the past two weeks um, I was only meant to have it for a week but I completely forgot to give it back. Anyway, we're going to review it today to see how well it's held up in the past two years. Or one year, actually. Wow, I'm all over the place today. Let's talk first about the design. The mechanism itself, as I've spoken about before, is fairly unique. The fact that you're able to flip it up and down, it's kind of satisfying. It's one of those uh, slider phone kind of mechanisms, so it's not necessarily going to be the most premium, but it feels great, it looks classy, and the back, like I said, looks a bit like an iPhone with that camera bump. That's something I really don't like. I, I really don't like the rear camera bump setup because it is just like the iPhone 10, and I don't like the way that looks, and a lot of Xiaomi devices are unfortunately the same. What I do like is the rear capacitive fingerprint scanner. Thankfully, it still has one of these. A lot of smartphones these days are going for under display or in display fingerprint scanners, which are slower, less responsive, less accurate, and in my opinion, they're just not worth the time of day. So the rear facing fingerprint scanner is great because not only does it still allow for those smaller bezels, but it also allows for a much faster and much more accurate response time, which I really like. The buttons look great and one of them is programmable. They still feel clicky and tactile even after a solid year of use. We also have a notification LED, which is something that a lot of smartphones are missing these days. I actually really miss it. It's something that I didn't think I would miss, but if you actually go back and watch my older videos, which I don't recommend you do, I do talk about the notification LED a lot. So the fact that we've still got one here on the uh, Mi Mix 3 is fantastic. The two downsides are that it lacks a headphone port and it, of course, lacks IP rating because of that manual slider mechanism. The headphone port for me is a bit of a bummer because it's going to mean you're going to have to use a dongle or wireless headphones and whilst I don't really use headphones on my phone that much, when plugging into speakers it is really useful to have that headphone port so unfortunately I'm going to have to dock it for that. However, the IP rating is, is something that's probably more important to me because I live in Cornwall and it's not necessarily the nicest place or cleanest place to be so that that's where it's you're going to have an issue if you kind of live in an area with a lot of mud a lot of sea a lot of sand especially if it gets in that mechanism it's going to cause a lot of trouble but i can see why there isn't an ip rating so i can't really dock xiaomi for that because anything with a motorized camera or a manual slider mechanism they're all going to lack IP ratings. The screen is really good. It's full HD plus, so it's not the most premium in the world, but it is AMOLED. It gets fairly bright, it's fairly responsive. The colors are nice. They're a little bit saturated for me, but that's something you can tune down in the settings. The overall responsiveness and the look of the display is great. Watching YouTube videos and anything like that, Netflix, Amazon Prime, it's all going to be great on this display because it is fairly big without making the phone feel big. A lot of phones these days have like 6.7, 6.6 inch displays, which is absolutely ludicrous. This is still fairly big around 6.4, but it keeps it feeling fairly small, even with this chunky case that we've decided to put on it. It's almost literally edge to edge, apart from that tiny little chin at the bottom. And of course, that's helped by the fact that it's a slider mechanism where you get your selfie cameras pop up at the top. And the display is one of the better qualities of the smartphone. Performance is also great because we have the Snapdragon 845. I never once experienced any kind of lag. Neither did Kelsey. And yeah, I guess as an overall package, the 845 is still a very, very viable chip. I think even back to the 820 is a viable chip in 2019, but the 845 specifically. And of course, you get the nice amount of RAM. You don't get micro SD card expansion, unfortunately, but you do get a decent amount of storage. And the software, of course, a thing that a lot of people hate on on Xiaomi, MIUI, is back here. It's not something you can change unless you go and put a custom ROM in it. I have actually started to like it, although there's no app draw by, by default. And I would certainly put a launcher on it, but the overall underlying skin, the Xiaomi MIUI, seems pretty good. Callum actually really likes it because of the fact that the animations and kind of the visual assets are so smooth compared to stock Android. And I certainly see where he's coming from there, but again, it's very subjective. It's a love-hate thing. He seems to love it, and uh, well, a lot of people seem to hate it. So that again is a subjective 
point, but I really like the software. The fact that it's able to clear your RAM for you and that it provides better battery life, it's very optimized, very powerful software, even though it might not be the most aesthetically pleasing to a lot of people, I think it's still objectively very good software, apart from all the pre-installed extra apps. Now, 3200 milliamp hours isn't necessarily a very good size for a battery of a phone of this size. Uh, it doesn't quite add up. I would have expected at least a 3750, if not a 4000 milliamp hour. However, this one doesn't seem to be that bad. It's certainly not a strong suit for the Mi Mix 3, absolutely. However, it does have some good fast wireless charging and some fast charging. And because of Xiaomi's Mi UI, it allows the battery to last longer than you'd expect a 3200 uh, to. So a lot of people, including Callum, they're getting a full day, absolutely fine. Uh, it's not going to be a definite all day phone for everyone. It depends what you do with your phone, as every phone uh, does. But this one, um, if you're a real power user, I would steer clear because 3200 milliamp hours is just not enough for you. But uh, I mean, if you're someone like me who tends to charge up their phone at lunchtime, it's fine. It's it's going to get you through that just fine because of how fast the charging is and how well Xiaomi's MIUI keeps up with that. Now, there are four cameras on this smartphone. However, two are on the front and two are on the back. And in my opinion, this camera setup isn't necessarily very versatile. So on the front, you've got a depth sensor plus a 24 megapixel sensor, which isn't necessarily wide, but it's, you know, it's just a standard focal range. And then on the back, you've got a standard 12 megapixel and a 12 megapixel telephoto as well. Now, I don't like this telephoto. I think the apertures are just a bit too small. And also the fact that I think a telephoto should be at least three times, if not five or 10 times. I think a two times uh, zoom is just not really worth it on a smartphone and for me obviously if you know me this is very obvious but it doesn't have an ultra wide i i don't think i could daily a smartphone without an ultra wide these days i really like the ultra wide angle lens it's useful it's versatile it's also very pretty if you take the right shots at the right angles and the right compositions so the fact that it doesn't have it means i couldn't daily it but it also is kind of showing of this phone is a little bit older than what you might expect um, of, a, of a newer smartphone the fact that it doesn't have that ultra wide when pretty much every smartphone including the budget stuff has an ultra wide lens these days it's just a, another one of those things I personally wouldn't rate this camera. I think the selfies are pretty good, but the overall lack of sharpness, I mean, everything seems to be a little soft, and the colors all lead me to kind of see this as a bit of a meh camera. It's usable, it's definitely usable. It's better than a, like an iPhone 7 or anything like that, but the processing along with the hardware, it's just not quite enough to give you what I would call the complete camera package that you'd expect from something that's maybe a little bit newer, not necessarily more expensive though. Video is 60p at UHD, which is just fine. I mean, that is the standard these days. And the 960 FPS slow motion is software based, not hardware based. So there's a lot of trickery going on there to achieve such a high frame rate. The hardware isn't necessarily able to capture that frame rate. It's doing a lot of editing. The camera app though is really good. I, I like the camera app. It's a little bit awkward to get in and out of, but there are so many settings. There's lots of options, lots of modes to pick from. Uh, it's still not up to that Huawei standard in my opinion, but I guess it looks a little bit cleaner and uh, a lot of people tend to like the way it looks. So yeah, from an aesthetic standpoint and a semi-usability standpoint, the camera app software, the stock one, not Google's HDR+, but the standard one is just fine. Pricing and availability, they tend to be kind of difficult on these Chinese smartphones. You can actually pick up this one for between 300 and 350 pounds on eBay used. Now, that's for the base model, and it's also one of the reasons I wanted to check out this phone because for that kind of money, you're getting quite a unique smartphone and certainly something that I would recommend to a lot of people if they don't mind, you know, the kind of subpar camera and, you know, kind of a lesser battery it's definitely one of those kind of hipster smartphones and I'm sure Callum would absolutely hate me saying that but it's just one of those phones that stands out you know no one's got a Mi Mix 3 um, and then push they probably got a Mi Mix 2s or maybe they've got a Mi Max uh, this is one of those smartphones that you can really show off and it's kind of a conversation starter and it's still quite practical you know it's fast it's got decent cameras got a great screen it's not necessarily one of those unique Xperia 10 examples where it was, it's a unique looking phone, but it's kind of not very functional. This one kind of fills a lot of boots that you might expect a smartphone of like a, a much higher price point to achieve, but no, you can get it in this as well, as long as you're willing to put up with a few uh, small niggles. 
A lot of you will know there's a 5G model of this smartphone available. It's about 100 to 150 pounds more expensive. And of course, 5G hasn't necessarily been rolled out in a lot of places yet. So I wouldn't really recommend going with that one unless you really want to future proof your smartphone. Otherwise, I think the 3G and 4G version, this one is the far better option. As an overall package, it's a unique design. It's got a decent screen on it and a great performance, all in a package for 300 to 350 pounds. Now this competes with something like the OnePlus 6T, the OnePlus 6, uh, the Samsung Galaxy S9, if you're in the States, the Mi 8 as well. And I would take one of these or maybe the OnePlus 6T over the other smartphones. This being the fact that it's obviously a more interesting phone, but also the fact that I kind of like MIUI. The reason I can't recommend this one to myself is the fact that it doesn't have an ultra wide camera. That's the only thing holding it back from me. Otherwise, I think this would be a fantastic smartphone. It is kind of a fantastic smartphone, but it's not necessarily one for me. Anyway, with that, it is 2.25. I'm not sure if you can tell I'm very tired, but I've been up for 24 hours, so I'm going to go and get some sleep. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and please do check out Kelsey. I'll leave his Instagram in the link in the video description, along with like all of my other social links. I do recommend following me on Twitter. That's where I'm most active. I'm trying to post a little bit more to Instagram, but not quite as active on there as I could be. I want to thank my patrons because you, you're still supporting me, even though I've been uploading very slowly. So I really do appreciate that. And I appreciate all the support on the last video as well. Please do like, dislike, comment and subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one. I've been Ryan Thomas and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.